Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm Heather and this is where I share all of my DIY projects. Today I want to show you how I easily upgraded my interior doors. They're faux wood hollow core doors, so just about as ugly as you can get. And I wanted to upgrade them to have kind of like a cottage planked feel and I think we really achieved that and it wasn't hard or expensive at all. One thing I want to mention is that we had to use two different materials for our plank. This was just because of the craziness of the past couple weeks and being able to find the right materials. So we started off with an MDF sheet, an 8 foot by 4 foot sheet. Um, this wasn't our first choice. Um, then we went back to find something more because we didn't find enough MDF. We actually went to a different store and found this really thin plywood which is much easier to use so I would highly recommend this and this runs $19.99 a sheet in our area at least and this one was more like $25 so maybe avoid the MDF if you have the choice. Let's get into the project. So this is the beginning state of all of our interior doors. Um, they are primed because I originally was just going to paint them. I was a little nervous to glue stuff on, whether I didn't know if it would stick or how that would work, but it did turn out great. So if you're nervous about that, um, as long as you do it right, you have nothing to worry about. Go ahead and shutter with me as you get a glimpse of that faux wood shining through the primer. Everything's going to be a lot easier if you just remove the doors and find a nice big open space where you can work on them. So I took them off their hinges and worked on removing all the old hardware, which I'll be replacing anyways. To figure out the plank situation, we measured our doors, which were 30 inches wide, and we decided to do 6 inch wide planks. You can decide to do whatever width you want and um, even do all the math so that you don't have to have any that are smaller than or wider than the other ones. We ended up needing to cut our own planks out, um, which was okay because my dad has a table saw. This is where we kind of had a little bit of trouble with the MDF. It's just so soft um, when you're cutting it. It's pretty hard to get perfect cuts. In hindsight, I would use a skill saw to cut this where you can keep the board flat on a stable surface and just move the saw along it. I think that that would work a lot better. We laid out all of our pieces, just dry fit them onto our door. We did, we did a nickel sized crack, so just about a sixteenth of an inch. Then we measured the little space left over. This will need a plank that's just slightly smaller than all of the other ones. I did go ahead and label the bottom of the door just so that we could get them rehung back on the hinges that they were originally on. In all seriousness, this is probably the most important step. Um, you're gonna wanna sand with a really coarse sandpaper to prep the surfaces of the door to accept your wood glue. The next step is to measure the length of your door and trim all your planks to size. I went ahead and dry fit all my planks together just to make sure everything fit as perfectly as possible before I glued it all down. To glue our planks down, I picked up a tight bond interior wood glue, which worked really well even on our kind of faux wood doors. 
Pretty much we slathered on a generous amount of glue and then we used a sponge brush to smooth that out. You're gonna wanna smooth it out flat and cover the whole area that your plank is gonna be laid on. This way you don't have little air pockets and the glue is much stronger this way. We continue to use our nickel to find all of the spaces. Um, we did end up having to fudge a few of our cracks in between our planks, especially on the MDF. That was, as I mentioned, a little bit more difficult to cut. We didn't have enough clamps for this project, so we just laid some of our scraps down and then put some bricks and you could use any heavy object to just hold those planks in place as the glue dries. The drying time for the glue is actually really fast, especially in our case because we had our doors set out in the sun. This was the one door that we did in the plywood and it looks so much better than the MDF. I'm kind of bummed we didn't discover this sooner, but um, hopefully that will help you in your project. So it's really important to prime the MDF with a good oil-based primer. Um, you can't use water-based because it can actually lift some of the little splinters that um, the MDF is made out of. So you need to seal the whole thing, including the cracks, with the primer. I primed my plywood door as well. However, I didn't uh, really cut into the cracks because I'm not worried about the wood. Um, needing to be sealed as much as the MDF. If you're adding the planks to the jam side of your door as we are, you'll need to take off these little molding strips and set them aside until you're ready to hang your door. After all my primer had dried, I rehung my doors as you can see, and I just went ahead, this is an optional step, but I went ahead and caulked the little crack in between the plank and the door, and then I used my weird finger to just smooth that little bead of caulk out. I found it easier to paint the doors as they were hanging. Um, also, it got a little bit rainy outside, so this was a necessity, but I'm using kind of a grayish color for my doors, and um, I'm also matching all my molding to that. I can't really link the exact color because it was a custom color, but um, just you can experiment with some grayish colors if you like this look. We picked up these door handles from Home Depot, and I'll go ahead and link those below just in case anyone is interested. Now we're gonna get back to those door jam pieces. So you're gonna wanna shut your door so that it's just latched. And then go ahead and reattach those pieces so there's just a sliver of a space in between the molding and the door itself. I'm not so sure what this face is, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with quarantine homeschooling for children. So this is the final product. It looks 100 times better. I love it, and it's so much more inviting and bright. And I hope that this project helps you solve any of your own ugly door problems.